Welcome back, everybody. Today, I want to talk to you about not just rising gas prices, but the possibility of the government uh, providing a stimulus uh, or a form of stimulus to those families who would qualify to help them with these increased prices and uh, price hikes as a result of Vladimir Putin's Russian attack on Ukraine, driving up energy prices, affecting us here in the U.S., Every day and every dollar we spend, everything we buy, food, groceries, gas, all, everything is going up. And in addition to going up, some of these things are becoming less and less available as these conflicts abroad and overseas this further disrupt the supply chain that was already fragile, to say the least, as we were working towards a post-pandemic recovery. So we have here uh, on Market Watch gasoline vouchers worth three hundred dollars a month. Some economists back new government aid as prices at the pump soar. So we're seeing here the Democratic Party pushing for a fifty billion dollar stimulus for families who would qualify as a result of, and this is just their initial proposal here. Families who qualified for the uh, stimulus program through March 2020's relief package. So if you qualified income wise for your family for the stimulus, then you would theoretically qualify for this gas voucher, which would be providing two or three dollars per gallon of gas for families. Uh, and this could end up being roughly two to three hundred dollars a month, per, you know, per family of a stimulus to kind of offset these rising gas prices that have soared well above four dollars in some states, but even higher than that in others. And actually, I wanted to ask you if you could share in the comments below where you live and how much gas is in your area, your city, uh, your town. Uh, I'm just kind of curious if you want to, and, and diesel too. So just not just gas. If you do diesel, I'm also very curious as to what the prices are that you guys are seeing out there. So we have some form of push here from politicians uh, trying their best to help the American people battle and offset these outrageously increasing high gas prices that, you know, this is the beginning this is the beginning of this 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 Russian Ukraine conflict. And I don't want to just pin it on that because the next conflict, the next uh disruption, the next the next the next is going to continuously fuck up our economy and pretty much make day-to-day -day living more and more difficult because we're we're still in a hole. We're still in a hole from trying to recover from the pandemic. As we're trying to dig out of this hole, we just keep getting more dirt thrown on top of us, back on top of us, making it more difficult to get out of this hole. So it's, you know, it started with, you know, supply chain constraints, and then it started with shipping container problems. Then it started with problems of getting labor shortages. We couldn't get the products through the ports. Then we couldn't get the products on the trucks and delivered fast enough from the ports. We had semiconductor chip shortages, food and water shortages, and now we have the Russian-Ukraine conflict that is halting production in countries associated with them uh, for fear of their safety, one. But two, you know, this is, it, it shuts down production. I've said it before, you know, one vehicle manufacturer, I'm sure there are more, but Porsche has shut down production in Leipzig as a result, direct result of the Russian-Ukraine conflict for the safety of their employees. Can't blame them. But you got to understand that this just hurts. We don't need our, our economy to stop. We don't need life to stop. We don't need the supplies and raw materials and day-to-day and -day necessities to stop. Because then we run into shortages. Then we run into panic buying. Then we run into hoarding crises or crises. Um, and that's not good. It's, it's not sustainable. And 
that's not going to help us get back to normal levels that we need to be. Um, but in the meantime, as these occur and more and more will. So don't be blind to the fact that, you know, this is the only problem that we're facing and or will be facing because there will be more. Trust me, you can. I promise you, save this video. You'll go back a few weeks from now, maybe a few days from now and say, you know what? He was right. Here's here's the next speed bump in the road as we're on the road to recovery. But fortunately, we do have some uh, indications here that support is out there. Um, yesterday, I put up a video. Check it out. It was uh, Governor Brian Kemp and his proposal to help Georgia drivers with rising gas prices. I will link it so you guys can check it out somewhere. And uh, that's just Georgia. Maybe this is occurring in other states as well. Hopefully, uh, this reduction of the gas and diesel taxes just to some form of relief for these rising prices. But beyond that, if we can get a federal push for a stimulus to the people for these rising gas prices, that would be helpful. Now, at the same time, that stimulus will more than likely be taxable income for 2021 or 2022 when you file your 2022 taxes in 23. So don't get that twisted. But at least now it can provide some temporary relief while these prices are soaring through the roof. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're seeing in your area. Comment below where you are, what your gas and diesel prices are. I'm going to keep an eye on this and see where this goes, if it actually becomes anything, and if we can start seeing some, some money, some checks in the mail, some direct deposits to kind of help offset these uh, outrageously high gas prices that we're seeing day after day. Thanks for watching. See you on the next.